life, health and loss of income exposures. As we all know that our lives involve uncertainties and risk, innovation and creativity sometimes involve greater levels of risk taking and the potential of systematic breakdowns of the economic systems. In this lesson, we will study risk of a premature death, mortality tables and life expectancy tables in assessing the probabilities of premature death and changing mortality rates over time. After going through this presentation, you should be able to discuss the financial implications of premature death risk. Explain the risk of premature death. Calculating the probability of death. Mortality tables and life tables. Discuss the mortality changes over time. And estimating the economic value of life. The financial risk of a premature death is mainly borne by the dependents of the deceased person because they relied on the income generated by the deceased. The risk of old age is generally borne by the person whose life is being assessed, that is, the need to guarantee the livelihood of that person. The cutoff point to distinguish between a premature death and old age depends on the particular person and family. The distinction between different effects of mortality risk was made at the beginning of the 20th century. Human beings like machines were assessed according to their ability to contribute to the economy. A machine is expected to operate during its economic lifetime. It may, however, break down before it reaches its life expectancy, causing its owner to suffer a loss of future income streams. A machine may exceed its economic life and this situation brings about increased maintenance cost. The analogy between human beings and machines certainly raises ethical questions and it may be disliked by most readers but it is a practical approach that may help us characterize the risk and quantify them purely from a financial perspective. A premature death is dying prior to certain age. The death of a person typically results in a variety of losses. The direct loss is to the dying person because the person is unable to continue enjoying what he or she was doing and still wish to do. Family members and friends suffer a psychological and emotional loss from the disappearance of their loved one. However, the economic loss is chiefly felt by people who depended financially on the deceased person, ex for example, spouse, children and parents, and who lost the future income that would have been earned if the person had not died. Another common type of loss is that of a partnership that lost a key partner, a situation that may endanger the continuation of the business. The probability of dying within a defined period is obtained using a mortality table or a life table. The risk depends, of course, on the individual features of the particular person, genetics, age, health condition, profession, ethnic origin, lifestyle, hobbies and so forth. They can tell us the probability that a person celebrating the X birthday will die before reaching the next birthday at age x plus 1. By common actuarial notation, this probability is denoted by qx. The mortality rate for males is relatively high at birth, but it declines until age 10. It then rises to a peak between the ages of 18 to 22 and declines between the ages of 23 and 29. The rise is rather slow until middle age, at which point it begins to accelerate. A life table or survival table shows how many people are expected to survive at each age out of an initial population. Reflects either the probability of survival, 1 minus the probability of dying, or the number of people surviving at each age. Mortality tables and life tables are essential tools in the hands of actuaries. A life table can be constructed by following a cohort of people that were born during a particular year over a long period of time and recording all deaths until the last one dies. 
generation life table. However, this method cannot be followed in the mortality study as it is time consuming. Observations have to be continuously made over a very long period and would also be subject to fluctuations due to secular trends in mortality over periods of time. Hence, what is done is to collect voluminous data from life insurance companies containing lives at different ages at the start of an investigation. Mortality experience of these lives at different ages are studied over a short period, say 5 years, arriving at crude death rates for different ages. These rates are graduated to obtain a set of smooth rates in a life table. An increase in longevity usually prompts insurers to revise premium charges once in a few years. Prices are based on a mortality table, which is computed based on historic data on life expectancy rates at different ages. The rate of change is not uniform, however, among various age groups and by gender. Mortality improvements are critical to setting life insurance premiums and reserves. Life insurance is a risk management solution for the financial component of life cycle risk. As mortality rate improve, you may be able to think of yourself as relatively younger as you age. According to the most up-to-date mortality tables, Indian adults can expect to live on average 2-4 to four years longer than their parents. Age is a very important factor when life insurers assess the classification of an insurance applicant. Factors contributing to India's overall life expectancy have clearly progressed in the last 20 years. Medical breakthrough including antibiotics and vaccines, public health and environmental efforts and increased standard of living such as better housing and safer foods. The estimation of the value of human life is required for private and business purposes. From the private point of view, there is often the need to assess how much financial protection a family needs in case of a breadwinner's death. From a practical business point of view, there are a variety of needs. For instance, there is often a need to assess the loss that an organization will suffer when a key employee dies or to estimate the cash needed to buy out the share of a partner in the case of a partner's death. A theoretical correct measurement method may be related to sophisticated theories about personal consumption and savings. However, we do not delve into these theories here. Instead, we focus on the estimated value of human life from the dependence point of view. In principle, there are two alternative ways to estimate the value. One is to estimate the value of the income stream that the deceased person would have had if she or he had survived. The alternative way is to estimate the financial needs of the surviving heirs. The forecast should be limited to a certain period, say an expected retirement age. When these income streams are expected to discontinue anyhow, even if the person survived beyond that period, the risk manager must find a way to create a similar cash flow to replace the lost income once the person dies. Because the timing of the death cannot be predicted, it is common to calculate the present value of the income stream to derive a single number. The use of the present value concept is practical because it can also give us one figure for the estimated economic value of the person. The purpose of the discussion is to get an idea of the order of magnitude of the value of the lost income stream and to gain certain insights concerning the needs of a typical person. The importance of the present value technique lies in its use as a tool for planning the needed financial protection against the case of a premature death. The present value of a future stream of earnings is affected by interest rates and by time. In real life, an income level does not remain constant over long periods. An alternative way to estimate the financial loss in case of a premature death is to estimate the needs of the surviving members of the family who depended on the deceased person. 
The particular needs differ from one family to another. However, certain needs are quite common when the person is a breadwinner for the family. The financial planning process means creating a cash flow plan that could easily be translated to present values. It is expected that this method gives a more accurate estimate of financial needs and results in somewhat lower values than the ones obtained by the first approach. It is noteworthy that this hypothesis is not supported by practical experience and we often find that the two methods result in very similar figures. The reason for this could be found in the empirical evidence that there is a very strong correlation between the family income and consumption. People get used to a standard of living that is strongly connected to the family's disposable income and therefore the financial needs tend to reflect the current consumption pattern of the family while the breadwinner is still alive. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. The probability of dying within a defined period is obtained using a mortality table or a life table. Right or wrong? Right. Mortality improvements are critical to setting life insurance premiums and mortality. Right or wrong? Right. The risk manager must find a way to create a similar cash flow to replace the lost income once the person dies. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. The financial risk of a premature death is mainly borne by the dependents of the deceased person because they relied on the income generated by the deceased. The risk of old age is generally borne by the person whose life is being assessed, that is, the need to guarantee the livelihood of that person. A premature death is dying prior to certain age. The death of a person typically results in a variety of losses. The direct loss is to the dying person because the person is unable to continue enjoying what he or she was doing and still wish to do. The probability of dying within a defined period is obtained using a mortality table or a life table. The risk depends, of course, on the individual features of the particular person. Genetics, age, health condition, profession, ethnic origin, lifestyle, hobbies and so forth. An increase in longevity usually prompts insurers to revise premium charges once in a few years. Prices are based on a mortality table, which is computed based on historic data on life expectancy rates at different ages. The estimation of the value of human life is required for private and business purposes. From the private point of view, there is often the need to assess how much financial protection a family needs in case of a breadwinner's death. The risk manager must find a way to create a similar cash flow to replace the lost income once the person dies. An alternative way to estimate the financial loss in case of a premature death is to estimate the needs of the surviving members of the family who depended on the deceased person.